hello and welcome um, to my channel. Um, my name is Miranda and today I'm going to be talking to you about some books that maybe could be on the International Booker long list this year. Um, it gets announced on Monday the 11th of March um, and I'm very excited. It's going to be a good time. Last year I tried to read the entire long list. Um, I didn't entirely succeed but I had a great time and I really enjoyed it um, and I'm really glad that I did it so I'm tentatively going to be doing it again. So what's happened is I've created a list of books that I think might be on the list or I would like to be on the list because I want to read them. I'm not going to pretend that I've done a load of research for this. Um, I'm not as enveloped in the world of international booker eligible books that I know some people are um and yeah it's just books that are from the Goodreads eligibility list which is not always accurate that when I looked through it I thought huh that sounds interesting um it's a list. First of those is Kabogo by Scholastic Mukasonga um translated by Mark Polizzotti um from French I believe um I read our Daughter of the Nile, Our Lady of the Nile, um, I can't remember the title, yay, um, by Scholastic Mukasonga a couple of years ago and I really loved it. I thought it was like nothing else I'd ever read and incredibly emotionally impactful. And Kabogo um, is about, as far as I know, um, Rwandan beliefs and culture um, and missionaries who are trying to impose Christianity on Rwandan people um, and how that kind of plays out and I want this to be long listed because I want to be pushed to read it um I like I say I really loved um previous book of hers um and I want to read more um of her work next is A Little Luck by Claudia Pinero um translated by Francis Riddle um another one that I want to be long listed because I want to read it and also she is previously long listed author she was previously long listed and shortlisted um for um, Eleanor Knows in 2022 I believe um, and I read Eleanor Knows and adored it I thought it was great and A Little Luck is about a woman who returns to her hometown um, after suffering a terrible accident um, and it seems like everything about her has changed and it's about her new relationship with this place that she knows um, and with herself I guess. I don't know I haven't read it yet but I will, I want to, um, and at some point I will, even if it's not long listed. But it would sure help if it was. Next is My Work by Olga Raven, um, translated from Danish by Sophia Hersey Smith and Jennifer Russell. Um, this is a book that I have seen around floating on the internet um, and in bookshops. Um, I mean, honestly, the, f the first time I was aware of it was um, when I went to a bookshop with my friend Owen and they were considering buying it. Um, and pointed out the most incredible signature that Olga Raven has. She has a really cool squiggly signature and that instantly made me think this seems like a book I can get on board with. She's also another previously shortlisted I think author for The Employees um, which again haven't read um, but this sounds very interesting. So this is a book about um, motherhood and um, writing. Um, I think it combines a lot of different forms um like letters and diaries and I have a feeling this is either going to be really good like mind-blowingly good or a complete flop I don't I don't know we'll see if I ever read it next we have three previous winners who all have books out um that are eligible this year um first is My Heavenly Favourite by Lucas Rinveld um I mentioned this in my anticipated, anticipated releases video. I haven't read The Discomfort of the Evening which um, won in like 2019 or 2020 or something um, but both The Discomfort of the Evening and My Heavenly Favourite really interest me um, and sound like weird dark little books and again I want this to be long listed so I will read it. Then there is Beyond the Door of No Return by David Diop. Um, I recently actually read um, At Night All Blood is Black um, and I read it over Christmas um, and if you have read it yourself you will know it is not the most festive read as it's about um, black soldiers in World War I um, and the narrator slowly um, like losing his mind. 
it's not great. Um, the book is great. The book is excellent. I love the book. It was brilliant. And The Door of No Return is about um, a botanist's daughter um, in the early 20th century um, who starts kind of discovering secrets of her father's life um, and his time in um, Senegal, I think. And it sounds quite different from A Night All Blood is Black, which intrigues me. Then we have The um, Physics of Sorrow by Georgi Gospodinov, who won last year for Time Shelter, um, which is the only book on the long list slash short list, I can't speak, from last year that I gave up on because I didn't like it. Um, yeah, so I probably won't be reading The Physics of Sorrow, um, but, but again, just so you're aware, it's out there. It, it could it could happen again. The second half of this list now is um, kind of wildcard things that I have just looked at and thought, yeah, yeah, I don't know, seems interesting. The first of which is Austral by Carlos Fonseca, um, which I've mostly picked just because it sounds like a very, a very, I don't know, a very booker book um and i'm not sure if i want to read it but it sounds interesting it seems that there are sort of four narrative um strands in this novel um all related to writing culture memory um and the loss of those things i don't know it sounds very complicated um with these four different um sort of threads that are not linked on the surface um and the topic just seems quite quite bookery to me i don't know but also books about memory and like the fading away of language and culture and trying to like hang on to um the past and um things that have happened to you that you don't necessarily remember entirely um they, that kind of intrigues me. Um, so yeah, this this one kind of caught my eye. Who knows? It could it could be longlisted. Next on my list is Pink Slime by Fernanda Trias, um, which is about um, an, a port city that has suffered an ecological disaster, um, and most of the people who live there have left, or at least most of the rich people. Um, and it follows a narrator who has stayed um, and who's kind of relationships are sort of falling apart um and I think it sort of yeah look, sort of looks at loneliness um and solitude and and also obviously the effect of um some kind of scary climate thing um that might have be related to pink slime. This has already won quite a few prizes um and again it just seems very bookery to me. I think exploring sort of human relationships and stories um in the face of like um big sort of ecological or climate related um events um is is quite i don't know it feels like um quite an award um baity thing or something that um a lot of people can kind of um relate to and find impactful at the moment um next on my list is mild vertigo by miko kanai um which is, you know, the first um, of the obligatory Fitzcarraldos. Um, I don't, well, maybe maybe they won't have that many this year. Who can say? This is about a housewife in Tokyo living a kind of unremarkable life. Um, and yeah, it's very introspective, lots of, lots of thoughts. And um, I, again, I feel like the interna International Booker has been, had a kind of record in the past of enjoying, um, this kind of Japanese fiction that is very much about the minutiae of life. Um, so it seems possible to me. Next on my list is You Dreamed of Empires about Alvaro and Enrique, um, which is about the encounter between um, the rulers of um, Mexico City in 1519 um, and Spanish conquistadors. Um, and apparently it's sort of dreamlike, kind of surreal, maybe um, possibly funny and satirical, not sure, but also a revenge story and um, historical fiction. I'm, 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 I'm into it. 
I want to read it. Next is Fresh Dirt from the Grave by Giovanna Rivero, translated by Isabel Ad. Um, I realised I forgot to say the translators for a bunch of those books that I just mentioned, so I will list them all in the description. Um, this is a collection of short stories, um, which I feel conflicted about, but um, it is on my list because I feel like on the International Book Along list there is almost always a collection of weird ass short stories um, and I feel like this maybe fits that bill. And apparently this the, the stories in this collection um, are brutal and in, contain, you know, horrible things happening to people, but also hope and um, kind of good things too, which is nice um, because it, it's nice to not just feel like everything is depressing all the time. Next is a book that I feel like has been quite polarising from what I've seen online, um, is The Most Secret Memory of Men by Muhammad Mabuga Saar. Lots of people think this will be on the list, um, but also that some people love it, some people really hate it. And at least in premise, this book really intrigues me. Um, it's about a young Senegalese writer who discovers um, a kind of legendary book written by um, a person who was accused of plagiarism and then disappeared. Um, and the main character sort of becomes obsessed with um, tracing this author's life and like what happened to him. And it's pitched as a kind of literary quest novel that is also about colonialism and neo-colonialism, um, which sounds really interesting to me. I don't know, maybe. Next on my list is Birth Canal by Dias Navita Wuri, um, which is an Indonesian novel, um, which I don't think I've read anything from Indonesia before. Um, and it's again a kind of like multi-layered narrative. It also spans lots of different timelines, um, looking at um, generational legacies, um, the effects of war um, and um, also violence against women. Um, just seems really interesting. Um, I do love the kind of book about um, that's about like different interconnected narratives um, that span across history. Um, so yeah, I think this one sounds really interesting. It's also described as a no novella, but the scope sounds huge. So I'm not entirely sure how that works, but that intrigues me. The last book on my list is Ultramarine by Mariette Navarro, um, which again, has, seems like it's already won quite a lot of pr prizes in France. Um, and it's described as pushing us to the very edges of the narrative genre. Um, very, very booker again. And it's about a female captain of a transatlantic um, ship who um, allows her crew to take a swim in the ocean in the middle of their trip. And then maybe something weird happens. Maybe it's just a vibe change. I'm not really sure from the descriptions online. Um, but <laughs> it it sounds again like one of those um, sort of simple books that then are about a lot of things maybe or try to be that the International Booker Prize really likes. I don't know. It's a slightly haphazard list but the, here we are. Um, it's interesting to me to look at some of these books that um, are eligible and you know, then if they're not long-listed, maybe I'll pick them up anyway. Probably not, because there's too much to read in this damn world. Let me know what you think of the books that I chose, um, and I don't know what you think is going to be long-listed. If you are going to read the long list, I don't know, just let me know what you're thinking about. Chat to me in the comments, um, and thank you very much for watching.